This is One Man's Family. One Man's Family is dedicated to the mothers and fathers of the younger generation and to their bewildering offspring. Today transcribed, we present Chapter 3, Book 71, entitled Definite Progress in Family Relations. It is said about a certain sidewalk cafe in Paris that the traveler who will sit there long enough will eventually see, passing by, everyone he has ever known. An interesting theory, though difficult of proof. Yet the validity of such an observation can be demonstrated on a smaller scale in many other places. Take, for instance, Father Barber's hammock between the two madrone trees at the Sky Ranch. The head of the Barber clan can lie there at his ease through the pleasant hours of summer and keep fully abreast of the developments in his household as one by one his sons, daughters, and grandchildren stop by to pass the time of day. At the moment, Hazel is sitting in the lawn chair beside the hammock reading a new letter from Pinky, whose quest for a summer adventure has led him to a job as second assistant cook in a lumber camp in Northern California. You want to hear the rest of it? <laughs> Do you want to hear the rest of the letter, Father, or would you rather sleep? I wasn't asleep, Hazel. I merely had my eyes closed. Go on. When did this letter come? On the morning delivery. Now, let's see. Where was I? Oh, oh, yes. I am sleeping on an old army cot, but the canvas part is torn, so I wove a rope across to make a sort of mattress. And the blanket is thin, so the rope cuts into my back. Yes. Yeah. I will have permanent scars from this rope, along with a cut on my finger I got from peeling potatoes. Huh? It sure is a rugged life. How's everything at the Sky Ranch? Love, Pinky. Yes, yes, yes. What do you make of it? Homesick, that's all. The boy's a little homesick. Dan thinks he'll turn up here one of these days. Dan's a very shrewd fellow. Father, did you know that Dan deliberately got Pinky the worst job he could find? Second assistant cooking a lumber camp. <laughs> I'm hoping Pinky will fool everybody and stick it out. You aren't fussing with Daniel about this, are you? Well... Hazel, Daniel couldn't do anything finer for the boy if he were Pinky's own father. I know, but... No, you don't know. This world is no maypole dance, my dear. As a partner of mine used to say when I first started in business, it's cold outside. Yes, yes. I don't know a better time for a boy to make that discovery than during a summer vacation from school when he's just left a comfortable home and has a comfortable home to return to. Well, yes, but... Personally, I'm very fond of Daniel. I have an increasing admiration for him. Yes, he has real affection for your children, Hazel. He's truly adopted him. And I, for one, think that you're a very, very lucky young woman. Well, I'm not really fussing with Dan, Father. And I certainly didn't intend to come down here and discuss my family problems. Oh, we started with Pinky, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Now, you let Daniel have a free hand with the boys, Hazel, when it comes to training them for the uh, uh, rigorous business of earning a living. Now, he knows something you couldn't possibly know about that department. Uh, he peeled potatoes in a lumber camp himself when he was a boy. Why, well, I didn't know that. <laughs> of course you do. When he was treed by a bull elk and found a cub bear in his bed? Oh, yes. That. Yeah. Daniel discovered that nothing is easy. Nothing worth doing is ever easy. And he got the habit of work, hard work, when he was young. That's why he has some freedom now. Yeah. He'll do all right with Pinky and Hank. You just let him have his head with the boys. You seem to be under the impression I've made an issue of this, Father. But I really haven't. Yeah. And I'm glad. You don't sound as though you meant that. Huh? There was a very skeptical sound in your voice. At the breakfast table, didn't I detect a rather elaborate politeness towards Daniel? Of course I did. Now, Father... Don't, don't tell me. I have an infallible way of knowing when you've had words with Daniel. Oh, have you really? An infallible barometer of Daniel's emotions. What is it? Daniel's ears get red. What? Hi, who's down there? Oh, Cliff, come on. Say that again, Bob. The fact. When you fuss with Daniel and he's unable to convey an idea to you, his ears get red. I've noticed it for years. Honestly, well, Bob. Well, this is nice and shady. You mind if I join you? Take this chair, Cliff. I was just going up to the house. Oh, don't let me drive you out. You weren't. Uh, where's Dan? Have you seen him? He was uh, up at the stable with Nicky a little while ago. I think I'll see if he'd like some iced coffee. Would you like some, Father? Not at the moment, thank you. Cliff? No, oh, thanks, Hazel. Sing out if you do. I think I'll make some cookies, too. Uh, Hazel? Yes? Daniel's favorite cookies are those thin chocolate ones. 
Sometimes you're so wrong, Father, and sometimes so very, very remarkable. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's up? <laughs> oh, nothing, nothing. nothing. Well, you're really pleased about that, eh? I'm pleased about everything, Cliff. It's such a beautiful day. Mm. You know, um, I had a fascinating conversation with a member of this household not long ago. Who was that? Well, let's call him uh, Nameless. <laughs> uh, what does Nameless have to say? <laughs> well, I asked Nameless if he knew how it happened that uh, I abandoned my son, Andy. You didn't abandon Skippy. To all intents and purposes, I must have, Dan. But that isn't the point. I said to this party, who shall be nameless, yeah. I said, um, how did Andy happen to land with Nicky and Claudia when I abandoned him sometime during those 11 years I've completely forgotten? Yeah. He made a profound observation. So profound, in fact, that you don't want me to know who he was? Right. He said, um, things happen in this family, beginning with little undercurrents and rising to ground swells, as if affairs were being managed back of the scenes by a very diplomatic hand. Is that so? Yeah, and so... He said, uh, a remark will be made by Father Barber or Mother Barber, a suggestion maybe, very, very oblique, which hangs about in the ether for a little while and then suddenly becomes an accomplished fact. For example, like uh, Skippy moving in with Nicky and Claudia. Yeah, isn't it? True? Interesting. Yes, Clifford, very interesting. Yes. What else did Nicholas say? What make you think it was Nicky? The word ether, my boy. The word ether is one of Nicholas's favorite words. Mm, trapped. Well, Nicky or not, it was meant in all kinds of... Of course it was. There's not a mean bone in Nicholas Lacey's body. <sighs> Just what is the point of this conversation? Is it leading us somewhere, Clifford? Well, uh, hmm? did you... Did you see Roberta before she left? Uh, yes, she came down here to say goodbye. Weren't you surprised to find her leaving so suddenly? Uh, yes, I was. Uh, I thought she was going to stay several days. Well, look here, you... Well, you don't think that I had anything to do with her sudden departure? There was a fine diplomatic hand somewhere, if you were there. Now, clear it. Miss Evans is a wonderful girl. I like her. Your mother likes her. She said that something had come up in town. Well, what? I, I don't know. She didn't have a phone call. That's true? No, check. She didn't have a phone call and she didn't get a letter either. Well, maybe she's just moody. Or maybe there was something in the ether. Now, clear it. That's not fair. Oh, I'm sorry, but it is odd, that's all. Isn't she coming back? Oh, sure, in a week or so. But I had to talk like a fuller brace salesman to bring it off. Listen. Hmm. Andy and his motor scooter. Andy? Well, Andy, alias Skippy. He's consented to Clifford Andrew, but everybody's too used to Skip. <laughs> He's invited everybody to ride on it but me. You don't mean to say you'd like to ride it. Well, I don't like to be left out of things. I'm not an old man, Clifford. I'm really in very good condition. Well, I'll tell the skipper. And if you'll ride that thing, I can promise you quite an audience, Dad. Yeah. Tell him what you think. I'll tell him right now. Oh, there's no hurry. And, Clifford. Yeah? Don't for a moment get the notion that your mother or I disapprove of Roberta. We're completely under her spell. Well, if you find out why she really left, well, let me know, will you? More than that, I'll make, a, make it a point to find out. Henry! Oh, it's Mom. Clifford, give me a hand with this, will you? Oh, hey, Mom, what's the big idea pushing that tea wagon across the lawn? Your father ate almost nothing for breakfast, and I brought him a snack. Uh, that you, family? There you are, Mom. It's easy going now. Excuse me, will you? I want to corral my favorite son for a special assignment. Uh, Fanny, what, what you got for that? Iced coffee and an egg salad sandwich, Henry. Good, good. I was getting a little hungry. You didn't eat a bite this morning. Huh? What was the matter with you at breakfast? Oh, I had something on my mind. Well, I knew that perfectly well. What was it? Mm, good. Henry. Huh? Oh, Daniel and Hazel were having a little tiff. But it's all right, though. Oh, dear, that's too bad. What about? It's all settled now, Fanny. We don't need to discuss it. I, I fixed it. Oh, did you actually, or did you just interfere? <laughs> now, isn't that a wifely remark? <laughs> Look at that, Fanny. Cliff's riding with him. I know. They're getting along just fine, aren't they? Our old Clifford is back with us again. I was watching Skippy at breakfast. There was adoration on his face, as if having his father take some notice of him was just too good to be true. Look at them, Fanny. Isn't that just fine? Yes, it is. There's contentment for you. Hey, not that hill, fella. You can't make it. Sure. This thing's got a lot of power. Hang on to me. Hey, hey, look out. Look out. We're going over. Turn it off. Are you all right? <laughs> sure. Some spill. 
How are you? Well, where till I feel? <laughs> Seems okay. Well, 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 not a broken bone in the whole body. <sighs> Let's back up and get a good start. And then we can make Nothing it. Nothing doing. That's enough for me. That's plenty. You can ride it yourself. Gee, Dad. I sure appreciate this motor scooter. Oh, do you, Andy? Oh, boy. I never had anything I like as much. Well, son, I... I'm very glad. Say, um, have you offered your grandfather a ride on it? Grandfather? Oh, he wouldn't ride it. Mm, maybe not, but I've got an idea he'd like to be asked. Golly, you think he would? Gee, where is he? Hammock. Where? He's in his hammock. Okay. Let's go. See you later, Dad. Yeah, how about it? Henry, Bobby, you stay right there in that hammock. <laughs> I might ride that fool machine someday, Skippy, but I don't think I'm up to it right at this moment. I, I just had a snack. It'll help you digest it. <laughs> Come here. Sit down. I want to talk to you. Don't you do anything foolish now, Henry. Uh, Fanny, where are you going? Well, back to the house. I'm going to help Hazel with some chocolate cookies. Come on, Grandmother. Taxi, taxi, cab lady. Right this way. Do I look like an idiotic old lady, Andrew? Hey, you call me Andrew. I know. You mind? No, that's okay. If you want to. Well, I'll still walk to the house. Thank you just the same. Don't forget to have somebody bring up the tea wagon, Henry. Yes, Fanny. Well, Skippy. Uh, Andy. You're the happy boy, aren't you? Oh, boy, Grandfather. Yeah, got a pretty good father, eh? Yeah. I never thought when he had the accident and got bumped on the head, he'd start noticing me and give me the scooter. You notice how I polished it this morning? Beautiful. I polish it every morning and every night. Uh, my boy, would you answer a question for me? Sure. Uh, who were you talking with out on the sun porch while I was having breakfast this morning? That girl. What girl? Miss Evans. Yeah. Uh, Miss Evans? Yeah. She looks like a school teacher I once had. Third grade, Miss Dollop. The third grade? Oh, <laughs> was that the year you got all C's? Yeah. Miss Dollop was a dope. <laughs> Extra sandwich there, wasn't it? Sure, thank you. Help yourself. Well, what did you, uh, what were you saying to Miss Evans this morning? Oh, just, just talking to her. What about? Oh, mostly about my dad. Mm-hmm. Along what general lines, uh, Skippy? Oh, I just said I hoped he wouldn't get married again. Because this is the first time in my whole life I really got to know him. Oh. Well, that, that's all you said, eh? Yeah. I said I like it better here when it's just the family. She said she had to go home anyhow, so it worked out fine. Well, you don't want to ride now? Huh? Uh, no, no, not, not right now, Skippy. How about this afternoon? Well, well, we'll see, sir. We'll see. How about, say, four o'clock? Well, we'll see. Uh, Skippy, uh, Andrew. Yes, sir? If you see your father, tell him I've solved that little problem that he was puzzling about. What problem? He'll understand. Uh, tell him to stop by down here uh, when he has time. Okay, Grandfather. See you later. Uh, oh, where is everyone? Where's your Uncle Paul and Daniel and Nicholas? Uncle Dan's down at the stable. I saw him last trip. Uncle Paul's up in the patio with Joan and Uncle Nicky. Be seeing you. Uh, Nicky, this awning over part of the patio is an inch wide. How about it, Joan? Kind of nice to relax up here when you're a working gal, huh? Oh, I certainly feel lazy, all right. Well, make the most of it, honey. We'll have to hit the pike back to the city this evening. And tomorrow morning... Back to work. Well, you seem to be thriving on it, Joan, old girl. Oh, sure. We're having a lot of fun, aren't we, Uncle Paul? Uh, you think you'll be just as enthusiastic a couple of months from now? We're still a little new. Well, I don't know why not. The only thing that bothers me is having to leave my job at the end of summer and go back to school. School might seem very attractive along about September. Sure, I know. You don't think I like to work just because I hated to do things around home. But this is different. I love what I'm doing, and I've never been so happy in my life. I didn't mean to imply that you didn't like to work, Joan. I'm afraid you misunderstood me. Well, you had kind of an amused look on your face, like I was like I was just kind of playing around at this job and that I'd soon get sick of it. I assure you, I had no such thought in mind. Joan... Yes, Uncle Paul? Remember that little talk we had the other night about projecting our own thoughts over onto somebody else? Yes. Well, just stop and think a minute. Hmm? You suppose it might be possible that's what you were doing to Nikki just now? Hmm? <laughs> Could be, maybe. 
You mean I was thinking that maybe I was lazy around home and I didn't like the thought, so I... I mean, I like it was Nikki who thought it? Well, what do you think? I'm not sure. If that's so, I... I'm sorry, Nikki. Well, on the other hand, it's mighty generous of you to reconsider. It's very wholesome. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of her, too, Nikki. Hey, are you two trying to embarrass a girl? <laughs> not at all. I, for one, am most sincere. Oh, I know that. I, I guess I'm just not used to being compliments. Well, you're going to get a lot of compliments as time goes on, so you better start liking it. Oh, don't worry. I like it all right. Gosh, who wouldn't? Why, certainly. Everybody likes to be praised when they know it's deserved. I never could understand the attitude some people take that you shouldn't tell members of your family complimentary things that it might give them the fat head to some such silly notion. On the other hand, these same people always seem impelled to bring out some negative thing. The theory being that criticism is for their own good. I hold it the exact opposite. If you want to do good, you emphasize what is admirable and play down the shortcomings. Hmm? That's the end of my lecture for today. <laughs> Not at all. I agree 100%. I like to listen to Uncle Paul talk. Don't you, Nicky? I do indeed. Hmm. Picture of a man trying to look modest. <laughs> we have a wonderful talk almost every night after we've had dinner. Joan. Oh, yes, Hazel? Telephone. Okay, thank you. That's Ken, I think. Excuse me, please. Hey, Hazel. Yes? Why don't you come and join us? Lays were being very profound. I'll be with you in a little while. I've got some cookies in the oven. Well, bring us some when they're done. I certainly will. This uh, Ken she mentioned, was that the boy you told me she'd been going out with? Yeah, you know, Nikki, when this situation first came up, I felt a little bit awkward. I didn't like to tell Joan she couldn't go out with him, and yet I was afraid you and Claudia might think I was overstepping my authority a little. Oh, nonsense. When we consented to have Joan stay in town with you through the summer, we assumed you'd do just as you saw fit. With Joan in your hands, we haven't had a moment's uneasiness. Good. Incidentally, my confidence in the boy seemed to be pretty well justified the other night. You know what he and Joan did? What? He picked her up and took her over to the neighborhood church she goes to. Or having some kind of ladies' aid social or something. Joan said she had a grand time. Paul, I can't get over it. I don't know what you've done to that girl, but I've never seen such a revolutionary change in my life. Well, it isn't anything I've done particularly. It's Joan herself who's done it. But what's happened? For example, I, I heard her call you Uncle Paul a couple of times. Well, she's never called anybody uncle in her life before. Well, she even calls her own mother, Claudia. Was that your idea, that she should call you Uncle Paul? Mm, not at all. We were talking a week or so ago, and it just popped out. She hadn't realized she said it. It's remarkable. Really remarkable. Oh, well, please, me, tremendously, of course. Now she calls me Uncle Paul about half the time. You must have some explanation for it. But you know, I must confess that my pleasure over the change in her is somewhat dimmed by the tiniest bit of jealousy. Here's a girl whom I love very much. I've tried my best to get her to return it. But I've never felt that I've actually been able to reach her. Not down deep. I mean, so that there was a mutual, solid feeling between us. And she loves you very much, Nicky. It's going to take a little time before she can show it, that's all. Oh, she shows her love for you. I was watching her. She has positive adoration in her eyes when she looks at you. What have you done, old boy? What's the secret? Claudia and I want the formula. Well, I think Joan's trouble has been that she didn't know how to show her affection. It's there in her. She has a tremendous capacity for it. Yes, I know that. That's what I could never understand. Well, she's essentially a pretty shy girl and very sensitive. She's covered that up to keep from getting hurt. She's unconsciously had a chip on her shoulder because she's been afraid that if she really showed her emotions, her love, it wouldn't be returned in the same measure. So her defense has been, well, a show of indifference. I see. I've been working on the theory that she loves me and you and Claudia, all of us. She just was afraid to let it out. Now she's getting confidence. I encourage her to tell me she loves me. And she has, and she's found that she's getting it back. Gradually, I believe she'll be able to open up to everybody. Because she's learning through you that she is loved, too. That there's nothing to fear that she won't be hurt, right? Well, it seems to be working at any rate. Oh, gratifyingly, sir. Well, Joan, that was a lengthy phone call. Oh, it sure was. I told Ken it was long distance and it would cost him a fortune. He wouldn't hang up. Oh, uh, maybe it was worth it to him. But he has to watch every penny. I know how broke he is. See, Nicky, he's learning to fly and he puts all his extra money into that. Oh, so that's it. I feel terrible when he takes me to a movie. That's all we ever do is go to some neighborhood theater because I know he'll have to skimp on his lunches, but I don't want to say anything that might embarrass him. Well, I think you're quite right, Joan. I was wondering, though, Paul, if it wouldn't be all right if some night I'd just say to him, Look, Ken, I'm working, too, and tonight I'm going to pay for the movie. What do you think? Well, you're a better judge of that than I am. 
You can sense the situation when it comes up and then decide when the time comes. What do you think, Nikki? Why not? Okay. I think I can work it. Oh, Hazel's cookies are done. She said she was coming right out with some. Some? We want a lot. Oh, they smell wonderful. Chocolate. Ah, that's for me. Ah, here she is. Hey, you bringing cookies? Yes, I am. Then you may join us. No cookies, Siberia. <laughs> now, look out for these. They just came out of the oven. Maybe you better wait until they cool. You think we're going to sit here drooling? Well, I'm a hot cookie man myself. Here, Joan, have one. Oh, thank you. I'll just put the plate down here and you can help yourself. And we're the ladies who can do it, hmm? Mmm, wonderful. Delicious. Perfectly delicious. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I tasted one in the kitchen and I thought I might have got a little too much chocolate in them. Mm, no question about it. Oh, yeah, yes, you did. Mm, too bad. Well, then I did. Oh, I'm so sorry. Now, here, take him back to the kitchen. Oh, but sorry. <laughs> oh, Hazel, don't believe a thing he says. He's only kidding. I could give you a good swift kick, Paul. Now, put that plate down first and don't spill the cookie. How can I be so gullible? And I always fall for it when he does that. Well, he'd already eaten two, so they were wonderful. I know it. I'm just dumb, I guess. We'll forgive it because you're such a wonderful cook. I hope he doesn't do things like that to you, Joan, when you're with him in town. Oh, he kids me a lot, too. But I give it right back to him. Good. Has anybody seen Dan? After all, these are really for him. Oh, see, will you listen to the woman? Fine thing. Said Paul, grabbing one in each hand. <laughs> Actually, Hazel, I imagine he's still down around the stables. Probably better hurry up. There won't be any left, said the man, slipping two more into his vest pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I've put some away. Well, I think I'll stir up for the barns and be sure Ben's round and up the yearlings in the lower pasture as I asked him. Would you like to go with me, John? Well, I... Sure, Okay. You want to come, Paul? Oh, thanks. I think I'll just set a piece and gormandize a while. <laughs> gormandize, he says. Well, <clears throat> shall we be off then, John? You haven't seen the new Pelamino, have you? Oh, no. Clifford said he's beautiful. Ah, uh, real busy. You have a treat in store for you. I'll uh, tell Dan you have some cookies for him, Eve. All right. Bye. 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 Ah, yes. This is the life. You don't mind if I sprawl, do you, Hazel? Why don't you take a nap? I'll leave you alone if you feel sleepy. No, 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 not sleepy. You might fan me if you feel so inclined. Well, I don't feel so inclined. That's what I thought. I haven't got a fan anyway. No. Another cookie? Not right at the moment, thank you. Hey, I understand your lumberjack son is having a pretty rugged time up there in the woods. Oh, poor Pinky. I think they're working him to death. But Dan insists it's good for him. We really had quite a misunderstanding over it. <laughs> you and Dan quarreling? What's so funny? And don't you agree it's too hard for a boy his age? Oh, no, you don't. What? You're not going to get me into this. I take no stand on the matter whatsoever. I'm not asking you to take a stand. I'm only asking for your opinion. I know. I have none. Oh, of course you have. No. Neutral. You're both right. There. That's my opinion. You're a great help, I must say. Who's a great help? Paul? Ah, Mom. No, no. Don't get up, Paul. You look too comfortable. Here, Mother. Sit here. Thank you. Oh, you finished the cookies, Hazel. Try one. Mmm. 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 Very good. Paul? Well, uh, I'm afraid to eat them, Mom. I'm a little too rich. What? Don't pay any attention to him, Mother. He's had about a dozen. <laughs> well, I was going to say I never saw Paul when he wouldn't eat cookies. He's in one of his facetious moods today. She's missed because I sold her a bill of goods. Hey, what's the big conference out in the patio? Oh, come on out, Cliff, and have a cookie. Oh, that's for me, baby. He keeps getting younger, and I get older. Who said cookies? You make these, Hazel? Mmm, they're grand. Where's the scooter? Oh, Skippy's off with it somewhere. He's been trying to get Dad on it all day. Well, I hope he's got enough sense to stay off it. Mm, he's tempted, I think. That I have to see. Dad riding a scooter. <laughs> oh, Father, would never be silly enough to get on that thing. Well, I'm not so sure to be just like him. Oh, going. Listen. Listen. Hey, hey, you're never going to miss this. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, what is it? Grandfather's on Skippy's scooter. What? Father's riding the scooter. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> Mother, can't you do anything? Oh, that mess. <laughs> What's that? Oh, look, Cliff. Father Barber on the motor scooter. Next thing he'll want a midget auto all to himself. Hey, he shouldn't try to go up that hill. It won't make that hill. Hey, Skippy! Stop him, Dad! Don't let him go up that hill! Come on, Paul. Oh, 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 oh. You're in a lot of gas, Grandfather. Look out! Look out! Give it more gas. Hey, look out! Shut it off. Grandfather. Hey, Dad! Hey, Grandfather, get up. Uh, oh. Can't you move? Hey, Dad. Dad, are you all right? Hey, here, Cliff. 
Let's have a look at it. Oh, what in the world are you thinking of? Henry Farber. Uh, yes, yes. Here, Paul, let me give you a hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Dad, come on. Up you come now. Yeah. Okay. I think he's all right. How about it, Dad? Yeah. Wheel that thing around here. Oh, Henry, you aren't going up that hill again. It won't make you, Dad. It's too steep. Who says it's too steep? Henry Farber. We'll take it clear over here. Get a good run and we'll make it. You see if I don't confound this thing. Henry, don't swear. I'm not swearing. Hey, Dad, come on now. Don't be foolish. Don't tell me whether I'm foolish or not. I know what I'm doing. Sorry, Skippy. Kick the starter and get out of the way. All right. Everybody stand back. No confounded red gadget is going to do that to me. Oh, what a good mate little boy. Hey, 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 he's going to make it. He, he, he made it. Grandfather made it. <laughs> I'll be dog. Go on, if he isn't the champion. Will we carry him home on our shoulders? No, don't touch him. He'll be sore as a boil, stiff as a plank for a week as it is. Oh, <laughs> yes, bloody but unbound. And the stubbornest man born of woman, and getting worse every year of his life. <laughs> In the recent showing of letters from one man's family listeners, not only was the response from family people, the churches, and social workers, but there was a fine reaction from medical men, attorneys, business firms, schools, colleges, and the like. At our request, Miss Mary Gazelle Hoffman, District Superintendent of Education at Lewiston, New York, gave us kind permission to quote from her remarks. She says, This is to testify that I have listened to one man's family since it first came on the air and have rarely missed a program. This is more than I can say for any other radio program. I know that many of my teachers, friends, and parents have likewise followed it continuously. It seems to me it has been a very valuable contribution to the American way of life. It is interesting and has much human appeal, while it is wholesome morally. It seems to me too bad to have it supplanted by many of the trashier programs of the day. Any sponsor would be glad to be connected in the minds of the public with such a splendid show. It seems to me it is a program for which there is a very real need in these days when families are meeting so many new problems that threaten to undermine the family life of the country and demoralize the youth. I would be glad to endorse the show in any way that might be most helpful in having it continued. End quote. We thank you sincerely, Miss Hoffman, for allowing us to read your letter and for putting so precisely the feelings of so many of our listeners. You've just heard Chapter 4, Book 71 of One Man's Family, written, produced, and transcribed under the direction of Carlton E. Morse. Chapter 5, entitled Father Barber's Aching Bones, will come to you next week at this same hour. One Man's Family comes to you from California. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.